Well, good morning and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while that we've done any videos, but we're now back. We've spent the winter working, being ill, and a few other bits and pieces. So we're now back out on the road traveling. And you find us on this overcast day in France. We traveled over on the tunnel yesterday. Um, very wet and windy in England and we've, we've driven about a mo uh, an hour from the tunnel to an air that we used once before called Air Sur de la Lys. It's on a little marina. You see some boats over there. And you've got the canal right behind us there. And a lot of hard standings. It's 15 euros a night. Um, with electric, um, you've got all your services here. You've also got a heated shower block further up, which stays open all year round. The top end of the campsite is a municipal campsite, but we will. I've done a video on this before because we stayed here on the way back from France last time. So I'll put a link in the description. But we're now heading off make our way through France down to Spain so I'll pick you up in a bit so here we are uh, 300 miles driving uh, we're just south of Le Mans in a camping car park here um, yeah, right, sun's just dropping over there, but the last couple of hours it's been up to 17 degrees, so we've done well. <laughs> we found the sun already. Um, it's quite a small little air, normal camping car park, electric, um, water, waste dump. I think it was 12, 12 euros for a night for here, so that'll do us. We're just literally just off the main road heading south from Le Mans. It's about a mile off the road, so we can just scoot back out tomorrow um, and keep heading towards the sun. I think we're heading to Bordeaux tomorrow to meet some friends. And then Friday, I think Friday, Wednesday, yeah, Friday we should be heading for Spain. But it's a nice little, nice little there. There's um, a couple of lakes down this way so if I can find them I'll put a link to it in the description but yeah these camping car park areas are good you know what you're going to get little river and then over there is camping for the summer obviously when it's dry it's all more electrical cut places all on grass um, and there's some chalets and toilet block. Toilet blocks open from June till September. And then up here, somewhere, down that way, is the two lakes that you're allowed to go fishing on as well. So if you're into fishing, there's a. I don't know what's in there, but no doubt you could probably find out what's in there. So yeah, about a six hour drive I think today, got a couple of diversions down back roads as always when you're in France, and a stop for some food, but yeah, trundled on down, we made our first fuel stop I think it was one, one euro 60, no one euro 54, which is actually cheaper than it is in the UK, which I was quite shocked at last time we come it was more expensive on the motorways it's just over two euros but anyway we're there there's a few more spaces down that way and then behind them trees there's another space a couple of spaces so not the biggest there but it'll do us right Hayley's cooking dinner, 
so we will catch up with you in the morning when we head further south and hopefully even the hotter sun. Air fries on, hot dogs, beans, air fryer running off the power bank as these airs only have six amps electric. Hayley's in the shower. I'm back. Yeah, well do. Do you want to go on video? <laughs> I'll put you on the video, shall I? <laughs> right. We'll catch up with you tomorrow. So this is the posh bottle, um, and that's the best stuff here. So this is exactly the same, but in a less posh bottle. So, so what so everybody does, they buy that one, oh. yeah, and then you buy the refills to refill it rather than the uh, special bottle. Yeah. Yeah. This alley undoubtedly has a medieval origin, but in its current state, it does not date back further than the beginning of the 18th century. John Zack did not have a rampart. The castle town was closed on one side by the castle, on the other by the town gate. Yeah. I was saying, this would have been the main street in the town back in the day, because and it came up to the chateau. Yeah. Wow. It's quite cute. Yes, it's cute. How much things have changed. Yeah. yeah, yeah my them. goodness. We also visited Les Antilles de Jonzac recreational swimming pool. Its facilities combine a spa area and tropical lagoon pools.
The centre welcomes more than 400,000 visitors every year, making it a major tourist attraction of the southwest area. Exhibiting a daring architecture, the project was made possible thanks to the regional geothermal energy heating the pool water and the ambience of this space is devoted to relaxation and well-being. After lunch, we headed for a tour of the famous cognac makers Bertrand. So Strathamp is here. Um, welcome. Uh, to begin the visit, we just have on both sides of the corridor here a little bit uh, preparation, some images of who we are and what we do. Um, I'm going to spend most of the time on this side because this is the family, the history. It's, it's the more interesting part. Um, so this is a family business, family owned and operated for many generations now. Um, the current uh, generation is myself and my wife, Terry's. We take care of the side with the bottles and the brand. And then my brother-in-law, Samuel, he's responsible for the land management, the vines, and the distillation. Um, our principal activity here is uh, the production of spirit, distilled spirit from grapes, uh, also known as cognac. Um, and that's what uh, turns the wheels of this family business here at the Domain, and uh, if you zoom out to the entire Appalachian version Contrôle de Cognac here in France, um, that's what turns this entire part of France. That's uh, the history of the, of the family. We have the grandmother, Simone, here she is again, the grandfather, Raymond, uh, and they both come from cognac producing families here in the village of Rio. And when they married, uh, at the end of the 1940s, beginning of the 1950s, it was closer to the end of the 40s than the beginning of the 50s, but um, they took the land from the two families and they combined them together. So this house. Uh, and the vines around this house is called the Domaine de Brisson. This comes from Simone's family. And then we have our windmill with the vines around the windmill, about five minutes drive that way. Uh, they come from Raymond's family, and that's the Domaine de Lage. Um, and if we go back through the side of Raymond, through his family, um, we can trace the history of the family with the vines and the windmill all the way to 1731. Very interesting. It's nice to get the history. Though. Yeah, it's the history is good, yeah. To kind of simplify it is that if you have a bottle of spirit with the word cognac on the label, you know that it comes from here. Okay. You're not allowed to use that word on a bottle unless it comes from here and you okay. all the other words. Uh -huh. yep. um, here in the wintertime, the vines are sleeping. This is when we prune the vines. In French, this is called bataille. This is a manual job. There's no mechanical solution to this. Uh, they have to be trimmed, pruned, one by one. Oh. Um, it takes three passes Three passes to get it done. The first pass, you just cut, 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 cut. The second pass, somebody's going to pull out everything that's been cut. And you can see here. And then the third pass, uh, each of the two arms on the vine that we laying is going to be tied onto the wire. So, after that, a few more weeks, we're going to get our first green vines that appear in these little buttons. This is the first evidence we have that we're going to get some grapes. Then uh, develop into flowers. There's a very uh, brief window of, of flowering of the vines, about two or three weeks long. Uh, those flowers will be pollinated. And after the pollination, the little flowers drop off, and we have the real beginning of a bunch of grapes here. This is going to mark the transition from our springtime to our summertime. So uh, after the ripening period, the vast majority of our harvest is going to look like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is that uh, you are only allowed to make cognac with white grapes. If you only remember one thing about all the things that I talk about with this visit, that is the big rule number one. You only make cognac with white grapes. Okay. You are not allowed to put red grapes in cognac. You might make a really interesting brandy, and people make really amazing brandies with red grapes, but if you want to call it cognac, it has to be white grapes. This is our distillery. We have three stills here. This is where we change the wine into spirit. Still number one, number two, number three. Um, 
all of these are working day and night uh, until everything is done. The two on this side are the little ones, they're more than 50 years old. Wow. Um, super great. Number three has been here for about five years now. Um, and so uh, let's talk for a minute here about how this machine works. Um, there are three big pieces to the stove. We have the boiler, we have the wine heater, and we have the condensing unit. Um, here in the boiler, this is where we heat the liquid that we put inside. Uh, you can see here these squares. It's very old, old days. This is a wood fired stove. They would open these to circulate the air. Um, later it was uh, changed to gas burners. Um, most everyone in the world of cognac uses gas burners. Some people still use wood, very old school. Um, but the vast majority of people use gas burners. It allows for a much more precise control of the heat. Here in the boiler, we're going to separate the alcohol and the volatile aromas from the water. So what we do is we put in our wine, turn on the fire, and as we approach that critical temperature for the alcohol, we turn the fire real low, on a nice low simmer and then we just have the alcohol come up first. So all of that vapor goes up, it goes over what we call the swan's neck. Once it's light enough, it goes over the swan's neck and then it's all downhill to the condensing unit. There's one pipe that goes straight through the middle, the other pipe takes a detour, but the destination is always the same. Here in the condensing unit, for instance, called the serpentin, it goes into the shape of a coil. That coil is immersed in a cold water bath in the cold causes the vapor to change back into a liquid and it comes out the bottom like you can see. As long as you keep feeding the machine, it keeps to produce the spirit. Here, uh, this is what we would call a pot still and a batch distillation process. If you only remember two things from everything I talk about, the first one is the white grapes, the second one is the cognac is always made batch distillation and pot still. You are not allowed to do it anywhere. Um. So here we have uh, would be a standard range of bottles, the kind of traditional presentation of the qualities. VS being the youngest, followed by VSOP, Napoleon, XO, and after that you can find reserve, all kinds of different other things. Um, for each one of these qualities, there is a minimum age requirement. It's another rule. But there's no maximum age requirement. So as long as you respect the minimum, it's your choice. And you're not allowed to make an age statement on the label. Because rules. That's rules. 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 That's right. Rules is rules. Um, so for VS, the minimum age is two years. For VSOP, the minimum age is four years. For the Napoleon, the minimum age is six years. And for the EXO, the minimum age is ten years. So uh, what I suggest, take the VSOP first. Um, and just kind of turn it in the glass. You can spin it if you want, but that can throw up some of the more volatile aromas. And you just kind of turn it in your glass to coat the sides. And then imagine there's like a bubble over the top of the glass. And with your nose, smell all around the edges of the bubble, right mm. at the edge of the glass, over the oh, top. Yeah. And as you go around, mm the outlines of the bubble, you can pick up different things. And then after that, you can take your nose and you can put it down inside the glass, but open your mouth just a little bit when you breathe through your nose and breathe very softly with your nose a little bit deeper into the glass and you can get different aromas as well. These are beautiful chocolates, aren't they? What a Having fun tasting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice stuff. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really rich cocoa chocolate as well. And beautiful. <laughs> They go really well together. What you want now, the stronger one? Mm.
What's it do, make it more? Makes it, more, it more. Yeah, it makes it a bit more intense, sort of. Mm. Mm. But less aggressive, yeah. I find. Mm. Mm. Very good. Yeah, it makes it. to like, comment and subscribe and ring the notification bell to catch up with our next adventure. Bye for now.